Now the third category of uh, uh, artifact uh, due to refraction is ghosting. This is pretty interesting. It occurs, uh, for example, at the domino fascia plane, which serves as a refractive medium, leading to double aorta, or in the case of a uterus, double gestational sac. The yellow uh, layers there uh, represent the uh, rectus abdominis uh, muscle with the fascia layer, and you have the renal, or the real uh, abdominal aorta denoted by the, uh, the red circle. As the ultrasound beam traverses uh, beyond the abdominal muscle, it reflects off of the aorta and it bounces back towards the surface of the muscle on the underside, and the beam is refracted due to the fascia plane and goes back at the transducer from a different at a different angle. And so, when you trace back the uh, line of sight um, along the transducer uh, uh, beam line, the image will now be uh, relocated uh, lateral to the actual uh, aorta location, as indicated by the gray circle. So this is a ghost aorta. Now since ultrabound be beams come from both sides, you end up having the same phenomena happening on this right side of the uh, rectus abdominis muscle, giving you a double aorta. So that was the ghosting phenomenon. How do you minimize or eliminate this? Well, you, again, you can vary the angle of incination uh, of the uh, transducer, or you can interrogate across a wider area so that you can uh, see the artifact come in and out of existence, and that will tell you that it's an artifact and it's not real, it's not an anatomical anomaly. Now, misregistration defocusing artifacts need to be considered. Typically, they're not as serious, uh, but they are also at the same time difficult to eliminate completely with the above uh, techniques. We just talked about reverberation artifacts in the previous section. Let's do a question on that phenomenon. The question is, a metallic needle at one centimeter below the transducer surface generates multiple reverberations. What is the location of the second reverberation? The choices are as follows. Is it A, one centimeter, B, two centimeters, three centimeters, or D, four centimeters? You may pause the tape to think about your response and continue when you're ready for your answer. The correct answer for the reverberation, second reverberation is C, located at three centimeters from the surface. Since the metallic needle is generated at uh, one centimeter below the surface, you know that the first echo, reverberation echo, is going to be at two centimeters, two times the original distance. And therefore, it stands to reason that the second reverberation will be at three times the original distance, which is three times one, or three centimeters. Now let's talk about multi-path propagation artifact. It describes reflectors appearing at incorrect depths due to oblique reflection of ultrasound waves following either a longer or shorter path length than the incident beam. In this next example, we're going to talk about the bladder. The posterior wall, in this case, is a very reflective surface, as is all sides of the bladder. As the incident beam hits the uh, reflective uh, part of the wall, it will actually reflect the, the beam to the other side of the bladder and it will reflect back, finally returning to the transducer, creating the impression that the length is longer. So here you have path length 1 describing an incident beam reflecting off the uh, bladder edge, path length 2, path length 3 describes the reflection back towards the original surface, and path length 4 describes the return path to the transducer. As a result, the bladder fluid uh, is perceived to be located uh, distal to the actual location, causing this uh, multi-path phenomenon. In effect, there is no fluid collection distal to the actual bladder. Potential solutions for multi-path artifact is to change the angle of incination to avoid oblique angle situation, and also to interrogate the object of interest, for example the bladder, from multiple views and angles to ascertain what is real from what is artifactual. Next, we're going to talk about mirror image. Mirror image is very different from uh, multipath, as we'll talk about in a little bit. Essentially, mirror image describes the generation of duplicate or virtual um, image of the objects of interest presenting on one side of uh, a strong reflector showing up on the other side of this reflector. Examples are lesions in liver, tumor, hepatic vessels appearing on the other side of the diaphragm. This case uh, illustrates the liver bladder and gallbladder on one side of the diaphragm, which is the abdomen, uh, but simultaneously having reflection, an artifactual mirror image, in the thorax, which obviously is nonsensical. 
arrow points to the diaphragm, which acts as the reflective surface. The uh, in the abdomen side is the real liver and gallbladder, and on the uh, thorax side is the reflected liver and gallbladder. Now let's talk about the mechanism of action that makes it possible to have a mirror image. You start, first start off with a reflective surface, you have a real object for which the ultrasound beam, according to path lengths 1 and 2, illustrates the incident and reflective beam. Path, path lengths 3, 4, 5, and 6 describes the path of the ultrasound beam as it reflects off of the diaphragm or reflective surface, going back to the reflective surface and finally returning to the transducer, creating the illusion that the real object is located on the other side of the reflective surface. Hence, you have the end result of a virtual object located equal distant from the uh, real object across from the reflective surface. And in this example, you have a liver lesion, which uh, is present in the abdominal side uh, in the liver. However, due to the mirror image um, mechanism, it also occurs on the other side of the diaphragm equal distant to the uh, reflective surface. Potential solutions for fixing mirror image artifacts is to change the angle of incination, to vary the reflectivity of the interface, adjust the focal zone or the time gain constant at each level of the diaphragm to minimize its reflectivity and to scan from multiple windows. Now let's move on to talk about propagation speed error. An ultrasound machine and its program assume that the velocity of sound through all soft tissues is 1540 meters per second. If the beam passes through a structure consisting mainly of fat, velocity is, however, is only 1450. Therefore, structures will appear further away from the transducer surface as a result. Now think about it. If you assume a certain velocity and it turns out to be less, obviously it's going to take longer for it to come back and you think the structure is further away. Conversely, if the reflector of interest has a velocity higher than 1540 meters per second, it will appear closer to the transducer surface than it actually is. So this phenomenon can also cause abnormal step-off of anatomic structures, such as diaphragmatic shift that we'll talk about next. Here you have on the um, leading edge side of the uh, ultrasound field normal diaphragm, and in the receding edge, the diaphragm step-off, as shown by the hyperchoic line on the um, distal to the liver. Now if you look at the yellow line, this describes the ultrasound beam uh, traveling through the liver, which has some indication of being a little bit fatty, and therefore uh, a fatty liver will tend to have a slower velocity of sound, and therefore the diaphragm will appear uh, further away than it actually is. Conversely, look at path B, which follows the ultrasound path through a, uh, the gallbladder, which is an anechoic um, structure with uh, fluid, and the velocity is higher. As a result, traveling through a um, region with higher velocity will make the diaphragm be closer uh, to the, uh, the actual surface. Potential solutions of the propagation speed error is really just to be mindful of this possibility. If you see a drop off, it might not be a big deal. In addition, newer machines with multi-beam features and improved signal processing capabilities usually will minimize this artifact. Next, we're going to talk about range ambiguity. Range ambiguity describes the use of a high pulse repetition frequency or in the presence of shallow depth, looking at shallow structures, causing structures to appear closer to surface than they really are. The key here is that the beam, the next beam that a transducer outputs is uh, sent before the auto return echoes are, are back from the preceding echo. Therefore, you want to avoid using excessively high PRF when measuring deep structures. Therefore, the solutions, again, is to not use a high pulse or partition frequency when measuring deep structures. And when measuring shallow structures, use a high frequency linear probe or use a step off if you're an older machine, if necessary, to minimize the situation. Let's end the segment with a question. A reflector is at a depth of 12 centimeters from the transducer surface, but the ultrasound machine displays it as though it is at 10 centimeters. So the question is, most likely this is due to what phenomenon? Is it A, is the reason due to range ambiguity? Is it B, 
that the speed of sound is greater than 1540 meters per second? Is it C, due to posterior acoustic enhancement? Or is it D, due to the fact that the speed of sound is less than 1540 meters per second? You may pause the CD to think about the answer and play it again when you're ready. The correct answer is B. The speed of sound through the structure of interest is greater than 1540 meters per second. Here's how you can think about it. If the velocity is greater than 1540 meters per second, that is fast, the object will appear closer towards the transducer surface than it actually is. On the other hand, if velocity is less than 1540 or slow, the object will appear further away from the transducer surface than it actually is. So you can use an acronym like SAFT SAFT, slow away, fast towards.